Welcome to Using Third-Party Materials, Copyright Tips and Best Practices, a video from the Georgetown University Library. As you identify third-party materials you may want to incorporate into a project, keep these tips and best practices in mind so that you can identify a clear copyright exception for any work that is not your own and can make alternate choices if necessary. At the conclusion of this video, you will be able to explain common misconceptions about using third-party copyrighted materials. You will also learn how to use online sources to locate materials with Creative Commons licenses and how to locate information on websites to determine if and how materials from that site may be used. Let's review some important points about using third-party materials. First, while it's very easy from a technological perspective to find, download, modify, and use online materials, these materials are almost always copyrighted, and addressing the copyright issues is often substantially more complicated than the technological ease with which you can download and modify them. Second, fair use does not automatically apply to all academic uses of copyrighted material. Having a nonprofit academic use which is generally favored under the first fair use factor, is only the beginning of the fair use analysis. All four fair use factors must be considered. Third, your copyright analysis must be done on a case-by-case -case basis for each third-party work that you plan to incorporate into your project. Depending on what your project is, you may have materials that fall into two or more copyright categories, fair use, creative commons, public domain, and permission. When you're choosing materials for your project, keep in mind the following. The public domain is a specific legal term, meaning that the material is not subject to copyright protection. These are usually older materials where the copyright has expired or works of the US government. While this term is often used to describe materials publicly available on the internet, that is an incorrect use of the term. Citing your sources and giving credit to the author or creator is not a substitute for copyright permission. You must address the copyright status of a work separately from and in addition to providing an appropriate credit to the author or creator. Consider copyright issues from the very beginning of your project planning. This way, you will have time to request permission if needed or find substitute materials for those that do not fall into a copyright exception. Keep track of the third-party materials you're considering using in a spreadsheet so you will have easily accessible information about where you found the work, how it's being used in your project, its copyright status, which copyright category it falls into, Creative Commons, Public Domain, Fair Use, or Permission, and other notes about your intended use. Explore what materials are licensed by the library for the Georgetown community. These may include journal articles, ebooks, reports, videos, and other types of materials. Access to these materials is limited to members of the Georgetown community with net IDs and passwords, so this is a good choice for class projects or other internal uses. For the main campus, you can locate our licensed databases using the A to Z databases guide. The Georgetown Law Library and Dahlgren Memorial Library have similar guides for the law and medical communities. Use sites with curated collections of materials that have few or no copyright restrictions. One example of such a site is the library's copyright and multimedia page. You can use the links for audio, images, and video to find lists of sites with Creative Commons or public domain materials for use in your project. Here is an example of some of the sites on our audio page. Once you've found suitable materials using these searches, be sure to check the license and verify that applies to your project. Use the filters on popular search sites, such as Google Images or YouTube, to limit your search to Creative Commons materials. For a Google Images search, first click on Tools, and then, under Usage Rights, choose Creative Commons licenses. If you find a suitable image, be sure to verify that the license applies to your project. 
for a YouTube search, first click on Filter, and then under the Features column, choose Creative Commons. Again, if you find a suitable video, be sure to verify that the license applies to your project. Often, you will find relevant material on a website without the Creative Commons or public domain designation. Most works, even when they are publicly available online, are copyrighted. To determine what uses are allowed for online works that do not have a Creative Commons license, look for the website's terms and conditions, terms of service, copyright, or similar link for more information. These links usually appear at the bottom of the web page. If you don't see a relevant link, Look for contact information for the site and send a query asking whether the material can be used in your project. Here are two examples of what the relevant terms of service might look like. The New York Times limits use of its materials to personal use only. This unfortunately is a very common restriction. Some websites, however, have more generous terms of service, such as the National Geographic Society, which encourages the use of certain designated content for educational purposes. If you need to request permission to use content, first look to see if there is permissions contact information on the website. This may be an email address, a permissions form, or a link to the Copyright Clearance Center, which is often used for permission to reproduce excerpts from books or journals. Be sure to plan ahead. Response time to permission requests very significantly and could take several weeks or longer. Note that permissions fees are often charged by publishers and may not be within your budget. Keep track of your permission requests and responses in a spreadsheet. If you are considering whether fair use applies to the use of a copyrighted work in your project, educate yourself about how to conduct a proper fair use analysis to help make an informed decision about whether a particular use is or is not fair. The law sets out four factors that must be weighed and balanced. First, the purpose and character of the use. Nonprofit educational uses are more likely to be considered fair use than commercial uses. Second, the nature of the copyrighted work. Using factual and published materials is more likely to be considered fair than using highly creative or unpublished works. Third, the amount and substantiality of the portion taken. Using a small portion of a work is more likely to be considered fair use than using a larger portion. Fourth, the effect on the potential market for the work. A use that has little to no impact on the market will be favored over a use that has a significant impact. The weighing and balancing of the four fair use factors is subjective and fact specific. Users and rights holders do not always agree on whether a particular use is fair, so there can be some risk involved in using materials under the fair use doctrine. If you are considering whether fair use applies to your use, visit our fair use page to help make an informed decision. The URL is library.georgetown.edu slash copyright slash fair dash use. If you have online materials you'd like to incorporate but do not have an exception to copyright law that will allow your intended use, consider whether linking to the article, image, video, or other material would work for your project. To learn more about each of the topics covered in this video, visit the websites listed on this slide. If you have questions or need more information, email library copyright at georgetown.edu.